Monetization stuff, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why. Okay. Give me money. Yes. The answer is I want money. Review. Accept. Submit. Okay. All right. Go ahead. You want to uh, uh, okay. go first? Yeah. Uh, I don't mind going first. What makes sense for you to go first to uh, like introduce it? Um, but it's a yeah, my, my moral theory is um, I believe there's, uh, I don't think there's any evidence for this. I think it's purely intuitional and then we make predictions for it in the future. And I think that we're going to have to make a model of morality for AI. And that of the various kinds of models that we can create, the model that I presented is probably the best one for AI and the most likely to be. Um, Objectively true if there is one. And it's that any involuntary imposition of will is immoral, and that the most morally perfect world is one that has no involuntary imposition of will. So, no involuntary um, so is that is that going to be it for your like intro, or do you want to yeah, go ahead. after? No, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Godless Girl for putting this together. Uh, T Jump for participating and everyone else for for watching. T Jump just stated his general view on morality is that you know it's objective and that something like an action or whatever is moral imposition of well, of someone's will. Now, so for example, pushing someone over they want not to be pushed over counts as immoral. So the first question I would want to ask about this this is rhetorical is what is the supposed to be a theory of? Or it's supposed to be a moral theory, but what's the, the intention of theory? And as I, as I see it, there's sort of four um, general sorts of approaches that teacher might be taking here when advocating his moral theory. One, it, it might be intended as a sort of conceptual analysis. Like this is what people are talking about when they use the term immoral and maybe related terms, you know? When someone says that X is immoral, what they just mean is it's an involuntary imposition of will. Imposition of will. That's, that's what he might be saying. Um, the second possibility is that it's intended as a description of the like target phenomena of the moral facts, even if those descriptions are not like built into the meaning, right? they're not analytic. By analogy, we could have a theory of water that describes its various features, features which are not determinable from a conceptual analysis alone, um, but are nevertheless true of the thing in question. Um, a third, it could be that it's intended as a new way to use the terms, uh, like as a sort of conceptual or term uh, revision. So he could say, well, okay, people might be using more language to talk about something else, but I'm going to propose that we use it to talk about involuntary it was, imposition. It's the it. second one. The second one was it, that there's an empirical yeah. fact and that it corresponds to reality. And that even if we don't know all of the facts of what corresponds to, it's that one. Right. Okay. Good. That's actually what I expected. So um, I can I can that helps me skip over some of the things that I was going to say, although they will probably still come up. Um, so for this part of my introduction, I'm just going to briefly argue that T Temp's theory actually fails as a description of the target phenomena. Um, uh, later, we'll talk about what possible motivation that could be for it, but here I'm just going to look at some of the reasons why I think it fails. Um, First, his theory, I think, kind of sharply disagrees with many many paradigm moral cases, right? For example, on Tatum's theory, someone stopping a mass murderer counts as imposed on that person's will, the mass murderer's will. Now, Tatum has to say that people are widely mistaken that this is moral, or at least not immoral. Um, now. The point I want to make is not necessarily that it's just unlikely that there's this widespread extreme error like this on this and many other cases, although that argument might be made. The thought is actually that it's cases like this that I think are partly target thing in everyday moral discourse, right? They sort of help to determine what it is that we're talking about when we employ moral language, right? This is just the sort of thing that 
almost by definition, <laughs> we're counting as, as a good action. So like, it's by analogy, if someone claimed that water doesn't flow in rivers or out of taps, um, they'd be making a conceptual mistake or, or talking about something else, since it's those sorts of features that we use in part to fix what it, the reference of the term water is, right? And by disagreeing with these paradigm cases, um, by analogy, uh, T-Jump's theory either involves some conceptual mistake or um, is just talking about something else. Uh, and third, I think T-Jump's theory not only fails to capture features that the target phenomena have, um, but rules out that they have them. So on, on normal moral discourse, um, people are attempt attempting to talk about facts which have consequences regarding you know, oughts, <laughs> obligations, values, action guiding procedures, rights, reactive attitudes, and so on. Okay, we might question whether all of these features are required of moral facts. Now, there's some room for dispute there, but I think it makes little sense to say that none of them are. <laughs> and again, um, those features are typically taken to be conceptually connected to, and on some views, even interdefined with um, moral notions. So um, those are some of the uh, brief remarks I would make about that approach there. So um, although more can be said, and maybe we'll get into in the discussion, here's what I roughly expect in the remaining time in our open discussion. Um, so, well, I expect a, some response on, on these concerns raised for, for his theory. You can ask for clarification or repetition if necessary. Um, I expect a little bit of, of motivation for the theory, or at least some reasons to think that it's plausible. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we can go from there. I think that's, uh, I'll leave it there for my introduction. And uh, yes, I will wear crazy costumes for money if you pay me. Yeah. All right. So um, your main example was that stopping a murderer under my theory would not be moral. Um, that seems quite correct. Like if you had the option of not stopping them, not forcing them to do anything they didn't consent to while also um, preventing the murder, for example, that would be more moral than forcibly stopping the murderer. And my, everyone I've talked to, every professional philosopher agrees with that. So I don't see what the problem is. That's pretty much agreed upon that if you could... Um, Option A, punch the murderer in the face, essentially. Option B, teleport the the victims away without imposing any restriction on the murderer. That option is more moral. It's universal agreement there. So I don't know why you think that isn't correspondent to morality because all the professors think it is. I don't, I don't get why you disagree there. Yeah. Odds aren't no, required. No. That part's not important at all. Like there are mother models that don't include those. So the fact that because my definition is the second of the, the varieties you listed, it doesn't matter what most people mean by the word. It's completely irrelevant. If most people mean by water something that has magical pixies in it, but really when they refer to water, they're talking about the physical thing that we drink and they simply happen to think it contains magical pixies. It doesn't matter if I define water as H2O. It doesn't contain magical pixies. The fact that they intend it to is irrelevant. So those were your two main objections. Yeah. Uh, well, there were three, but I'll, I'll start with that first one. So I wasn't trying to say that... Um, that look in the example the, the question was would it be more for them to stop the mass uh, murder right um we can just suppose that the, there's only like two courses of action available to them stop them or not stop them well that's just and a straw man I'm not that, sure isn't, that isn't addressing my model because my model is involuntary imposition of will only pertaining to yourself and your property so for it to be an involuntary imposition on the murder you have to stop something about them or their property which means like punching them in the face, tying their arms behind their back, or something along those lines. Um, simply teleporting. Yeah, you must be stopping them from carrying out their intended action. Not You'd be preventing them from doing the mass. No, no, no. If you're talking about my model, it has to, imposition on will has to be an imposition on their property or their selves. Moving somebody else away from them is not an imposition on their will. By my definition, you're just strawmanning the definition I'm using. So, by my definition right. of a imposition of will it's not getting anything you want that's not what will is here will specifically only refers to yourself and your property so in the case of a murder that would be their body their intentional states um their ownership if they have a, a gun or whatever they own the gun but it wouldn't entail the other people so if i teleported the other people i would not be in any way infringing on their will by my definition um and so if your objection is is that I'm infringing on the will of the murderer by teleporting somebody mm -hmm. else who is not the murderer. 
and that would be immoral by my model. Well, no, it wouldn't in any way be immoral by my model. It would only be immoral if I punched the murderer or if I physically stopped the murderer only because there is a logically possible alternative way to achieve the good thing of saving the lives without the imposition of will, which again, will is restriction of the, the individual's yeah. self or property. Yeah. So, okay. So I can accommodate this, I think, alteration to your model, but let's just take it as part of your model. Um, I mean, personally, I would think that restricting them from achieving this aim, like, is an imposition of their will. But if you mean by imposition of will something that has specifically to do with their person or property, I can just stipulate or amend the example so that the only two options are do nothing or restrain them from carrying out their mass murder. And the same result, I think, follows. Well, no, because you can't, because my model entails all logically possible outcomes. It's immoral because there's a more logically possible outcome, which is not restraining them. And so the reason it's immoral is because... Right you could not restrain them. And so in that case, it would be a justified immoral action. So it would be something that you have to do that isn't the best situation, uh, isn't the best possible outcome, which would thereby be immoral because morality is mine is the absolute perfection definition. And so in that case, it's a justified immoral action. And so it would agree again with the morality that is stipulated by most philosophers. Utilitarianism agrees on that point that there are no. what... Like, no, it, it disagrees, right? Because if the only no. courses of action available to you are those two, and you're saying that it counts as immoral, uh, that's just wrong, right? If it's, it's going to disagree no. with utilitarianism. No, well, this agrees with utilitarianism. So me and Alex Malpass specifically agreed that, yes, both utilitarianism and my model address these exact same. We just label them differently. So the fact that we utilitarianism understands that there are some bad things you have to do to prevent worse mm -hmm. things and labels them moral no. or labels them a justified immoral action makes zero difference to the, to the description. They're just saying, no, this is not the optimal situation. And whether you label the optimal situation, objective morality or a justified moral action makes no difference to the model. So it doesn't actually disagree in any way in that context. No, no, no. What you're, the stuff you're adding in about how there could be justified immoral actions. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by justified there, but we can get to that. What I'm saying here is that your model counts this as immoral on utilitarianism this just plainly would not be immoral in fact it would be extraordinarily moral no that's that's wrong so if there's only two courses of action that you can take one involves this restraining that would be immoral. no no so utilitarianism agrees utilitarianism that it is moral. not a perfectly uh perfectly perfect situation you're not doing the perfect thing you're still doing a bad thing to prevent a worse thing no yes 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 they do no it would yes. be a good thing because it's maximizing utility given the options available no. So again, utilitarianism fully agrees that of all the logical possible outcomes, this is not the most maximal. You don't have the most maximal as an option. No. It can it can grant that. If it couldn't grant that, it would be a stupid model and nobody would accept it. So it grants this is not the most maximal model. And when I'm saying morality, I mean the most maximal model. So the language of me using justified immoral action just means the best action you can do given your pragmatic limitations is a language difference. You haven't brought up any any legitimate criticism on model. You're just cr criticizing the language usage. No, no, no. You can you can add this other things, these other things about how it's justified a moral action. Again, I don't know what that means. Um, and that could the results of that, like what could count as a justified moral action, maybe that will agree with utilitarianism. I'm just pointing out that your the theory of um, what counts as immoral doesn't agree with what utilitarianism would count as immoral. Right. You're just finally, disagreeing with the language. The have, there's no valid criticism. There are three possible outcomes. There is the maximized outcome, the perfectly moral outcome, which yeah. you're, you're in your analogy, we don't have the option of. Both me and utilitarianism agree that there is such a thing, the maximized outcome. Um, I label that the moral outcome. It labels it the perfect, I don't know what utilitarianism label it, the perfect possible, logically possible outcome, something. And then we have the pragmatic outcome, like kill the bad guy or whatever. And in utilitarianism, they label that moral, and I label it a justified immoral action. It makes no difference what we label it right. here. Um, and then there's the immoral action of doing the worst thing you can do, essentially. So those are the three options. All three options are covered by both models. We just label them differently. There's no substantive difference between those other than how we label them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm again, if you want to have a, a expanded theory, which talks about justified action that's meant to be this um, is a basal part of my model. Equivalent. If you just don't understand it, you're not a part of my model. I'm not adding anything in here. This is in every one of my videos I've ever talked about. So it's not, there's no addition here. No, the, the basic part of your model that I was trying to address is what you said at the beginning. 
well, that something is immoral if it's an involuntary position of will. Right. And in terms of what your model counts as immoral and what would be counted as immoral in utilitarianism, there's a difference. Now, you might say that there, um, this expanded part about how there could be justified immoral action, um, that what counts as justified immoral action can be immoral, it can be moral on utilitarianism. Maybe there's some sort of equivalence there. Maybe um, that would have to be shown. But that's not relevant to the point I'm making, which is that there's stuff that's immoral on your account that are not immoral on utilitarianism. And an example where there's only two courses of action you can take, um, restrain or not restrain the uh, person, um, utilitarianism is going to say restraining them is going to maximize utility, utility in that scenario. And your theory is going to say it's immoral. So they're going to disagree. You might say there's justifiably- There's no immoral. disagreement there. So I've literally talked this over with professors. There's the exact same agreement. Would utilitarianism yeah. say the better option would be to not impose on anyone ever? If we could teleport the people, would that be a better option? Every utilitarian is going to say yes, every single time, 100% of the time. No, no, yes. they're not. Yes, Because there's going to be some scenarios where the only courses of action no. are oh imposed and what, maximized. What, what I just said was, if not imposed and lower. there is a better logical possibility, would that be a better option? The answer is yes. If you could do this, whether if you could do this, that's a stipulation in the statement here. Would it be better? Yes. yes. That's that's the stipulation. And so when I'm using the word moral, I'm saying that one, the logically possible best outcome. So both me yeah, and the again, utilitarian is agreeing. I'm talking about, one. I stipulated there's only two course of actions you can take, right? No, that doesn't make so it all the possible it's actions. A straw man. It's irrelevant, literally irrelevant. Oh, it's ignoring the, the way that my model uses semantics and ignoring the way utilitarianism uses semantics. You're just not comparing the two. I'm, I'm assessing this example no, on your theory. No, your theory not. would say that it's immoral. No. Utilitarianism would say that it's moral. No, again, you're not listening. So again, utilitarianism and me agree. There is a better logical outcome. And when I use moral, I'm talking about the best logically possible oh, I've, outcome. I've, I've stipulated an example where there's only two possible outcomes. I don't care because you're not addressing my model. Your straw man is relevant. Okay. My model of Why morality is a straw man? It's a hypothetical always necessarily, what, what my model, shut say. up. Oh my God. My model necessarily entails the best logically possible outcome in all cases. You don't get to stipulate there's only two pragmatic choices. It's just irrelevant. My model doesn't care. The pragmatic limitations are irrelevant. My model specifically deals with the best logically possible objective way it could be. It has nothing to do with the pragmatic limitations. I don't care about the pragmatic limitations. So you saying, oh, but I'm limited I, I to these the, pragmatic the, limitations, like great straw man, address my model, which is only the best logically possible outcomes. Look, I agree that on your model, there's um, possible states of logically possible states of affairs where they aren't imposed and you know maybe the other people are removed or in a way that nobody gets their wills imposed on. That's fine. But on this example that I'm scenario, um, proposing, where there are two courses of action that you can take, imposed or not imposed, utilitarians are going to say that that's moral, at the very least not say that it's immoral, and your theory is going to say that it's immoral. And so they're, just, they're going to disagree. I, I don't know why there's any pushback on this basic point. Because it's just not pushback. You're just I'm arguing semantics. It's like saying, if I could choose between one to use the religious example, I could choose between one sin or a worse sin. I could uh, deny God or kill a baby or something. Mm -hmm. And both are going to be sins. Both are bad. Neither are good. They are both bad things. Neither are good things. They are not good things. They are bad things. You're picking between the less bad thing, obviously. And in the case where you have to harm someone to save another person, it is obviously, intuitively, everybody agrees, yes, you're doing a bad thing to prevent a worse bad thing. Moral is not the word for bad, no. the word for good. So if you're doing a bad thing to prevent a worse bad thing, that is a justified immoral action. It is wrong to call that moral. So I think utilitarianism, those models, those particular models of utilitarianism are stupid. Yeah. Not all of them agree on that. They are. They do accommodate the greater possible, logically possible good. Yeah. So, so if, if, you if say, your argument is that yeah, no. mine calling the lesser evil not moral is is mm -hmm. not congruent with the intuitions most people use of morality, you would be wrong. My model is a better match of moral intuitions than most people. Because in this case, stopping a murderer is doing one bad thing to prevent a greater bad thing. So they're going to agree, for the most part, it's a justified immoral action, not a moral thing. It's not a moral thing. Moral thing would be the God power thing where you teleport people. That's the moral thing. Yeah. So we can turn afterwards to whether this agrees with most judgments or intuitions, which I strongly disagree with. But I just want to get clear on this point. Um, if we have two courses of action and you say that, okay, both of them are sins, right? Yeah. Well, on utilitarianism, if, if those are the 
two possible actions. Utility, which is good, is going to be whichever maximizes utility, right? And one of those, if better at maximizing utility than the other, is going to uniquely maximize utility, and that's and so it's going to be good on utilitarianism. Yeah, utilitarianism you, you, is not going to say that both of them are bad. Uh, that doesn't make any sense on utilitarianism. Right. So you're giving an example of why utilitarianism doesn't model morality well. It's garbage. The point of that was to, the point of that was to give an example where your your theory and utilitarianism disagree. Well, I, your I, I said the exact same thing to Alex Malpass and he disagreed. So you can take that up with him. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe we can move on because I think this is a really basic point. I don't want to get so caught up in it because it's sort of missing the a lot of the meat of the discussion. Um, so next, you said, we'll turn to what you just said, and then I think maybe with them we'll go to your response to my second concern. You said that um, your model really does a great job at capturing normal moral intuitions, something like that. Is that what you would contend? In that example, yes. In the previous example. Oh, in that example. But I mean, would you contend that that's true generally as well or, or no? Uh, no, it uses those as a starting point to infer future things that will not correspond to morality of current intuitions. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, well, you're going to predict things like people are going to, what, uh, associate things like, well, other things that are in, in positions of will um, as immoral. Yeah. That's, the, that's where the prediction yeah, right. like as we gain like a, more technological and intellectual um, acuity, we'll see more involuntary positions of will as immoral than we do now. Um, and based on the pragmatic limitations, we see some as perfectly fine because of our cultural limitations. And in the future, we'll see those as horribly immoral. And it will continue down that path until we see every involuntary position of will as immoral. Yeah. Okay. So we'll return we'll to that. But on the on the capturing of intuitions in the case discussed, you think that people generally or maybe moral philosophers are going to agree that with your model that stopping the mass murderer um uh you know forcibly is immoral you think that's right you think that's the intuition that most people are going to share they're going to share depends on their which view they hold so if like they're a value theorist or a deontologist or something and they see killing or physically restraining somebody as immoral, then yes, they're going to agree. Yes, that is an immoral thing you've done, but you've done it to prevent a greater immoral thing. So yeah, that's that would be agreed upon if they hold those views. Yeah, so I, I, of course, some people might count that as immoral, but I think the vast majority of people are going to say, not only is that like good, that was like heroic. <laughs> like that's super praiseworthy. That's a thing that they really should have done. That was very good, right? Um, so they're not going to call it immoral. They're going to call it quite moral. <laughs> um, so I don't, I mean, if you want to just say that, oh, you have this idea that most people are not going to say that. Um, or they're gonna well, say again, you're conflating the stopping the, the murderer with the means by which you stop them. Those are two separate things. Like shooting the murderer, no, 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 no. one says that's heroic. I built, I built, well, I, I disagree with that, but I built into it that they just restrained them, right? That's the example that we're going with. They just sure. kind of held them back. Sure, but like if you have the power to do something better, like if you're a god and you choose to restrain them instead of teleporting the victim, you're immoral. You've done something wrong. It's like the doctor example. A doctor in the 1800s cuts your leg off to save you from sepsis because he has to. He's perfectly justified. Doctor today does that. He gets sued for malpractice. So if you have the power to do something less harmful in this society that I've projected into the future where everybody sees involuntary position is immoral they will see that as immoral if you had the option to do something yeah. different and you didn't you would be immoral you have done something wrong this is not the ideal situation so yes if you yeah. stop the murderer in a way that infringes on their will while having the option to do less infringement of will you would have done something wrong you would have been careless neglecting and pretty much yeah, everybody so agrees with that like a hundred percent all of the philosophers agree with that yeah if you yeah. could have stopped him in a less no. harmful way yes that would have been the thing to do like who, who yeah, so there's two with issues with that. Um, well, I think actually a lot of people disagree with that, but there's there's two issues. One of them is that. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with a lot of the um, literature on this sort of stuff, but a lot of people think that there are super derogatory actions that you could have done better, maybe cause a little bit less harm, but it was still good. It was still something that you um, it was moral for you to do. 
even if you could have done something even better, maybe cause less harm. I don't really want to get into a discussion of whether there are super derogatory actions. Um, um, but that's one thing that a lot of people think is the case. Well, those only happen uh, in the case effects. of like moral action. So if you give someone $5, I mean, you could have given right. them 10 or something. But if you're doing something bad, like harming somebody, even if you're harming them in order to save somebody else, if you could have done less harm, you're morally obligated to do so within reason. Like if you're God and could have done it without any risk, then yes, you should have done that 100%. There's no no excuse to yeah, have but, not done that. No. Well, th nothing you've said actually rules this out as a potential case of super regulatory action. Um, perhaps it's it's good for them to, or it's moral for them to stop the, the shooter. Um, but it's not like required of them, even if, they ha if they're capable of, um, stopping them in a way which like is slightly less harmful to the shooter. Yeah, I don't know anybody um, who agrees with that. So pretty much everyone agrees that if you could stop them without yeah. harming them, that's morally superior. Like that's a universal. Like everybody, every philosopher. Oh no, no, like, no, yeah, that's that's good. Yes. No, no, most of them will agree it's morally superior. Yeah. Right. But that doesn't mean on superiority actions, one action can be morally superior to another, even if even though the the second is not immoral. Right, right. So I'm saying moral. they would agree that it is immoral to harm them if you're doing it unnecessarily to stop them. So you're stopping them and harming them in the process yeah. deliberately for no need. That is immoral. Like that's I've gotten pretty much universal agreement. Yeah, that's immoral. You, you, there's yeah, no that's that's not a moral actually, thing. Does not have wide agreement. Um what? but whatever. I'm actually fine to grant it. The second concern is um regarding your response here is that in the example, you didn't have the capacity of stopping them in a um, less harmful way, yep. right? So I stipulated that. That was part of the example. Um, so objectively, it's, case, you're doing something that is not objectively perfect. So I'm going to call that a justified immoral action. It's just the label I'm giving that. Right. But, OK, so you want to say that it's not that it's, it's not that it's you could have done something less less harmful because it was just this is a case where right. these are your only options, right? Yep restrain them or not. And um, you still want to say that's immoral. Would you still say in that sort of hypothetical that people would generally agree with and have this intuition that that's with immoral? The, the label, no, but again, the label justified immoral action is essentially the same as what the utilitarian would say is the, the one that maximizes the most utility. So it's not justified immoral to me means not the same as immoral. I think you're conflating those two. Right. No, 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 but it entails that it's immoral. It's because it is. It's right. Objectively, you're doing one of the bad things. So there's another bad thing in the universe that wasn't there before. So it's objectively an right, immoral that's... action. Right. And you can point out that your some of your um, objectively immoral actions are going to, uh, sorry, justified immoral actions are going to agree with utilitarianism, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing out that I think and this could be, you, maybe you want to say this is a language thing, but I think most people are going to not share the intuition or the judgment that that sort of scenario, restraining the the shooter is immoral, right? In fact, they're going to say it's quite, um, quite highly moral. <laughs> um, no, like everyone I've talked to, one hundred percent agrees on this. No, no, no doubt whatsoever. Can you, if you could restrain, if you could stop the murder without restraining him, would restraining him be an unnecessary immoral action? Yes, hundred percent agree. That's not Nobody the hypothetical. You just that is hang on. hypothetical. No, the hypothetical is that you only have two options. No, no, you're, them you're, you're again, you're applying these pragmatic limitations to an objective model of morality. It's literally. A contradiction to say here are the subjective limitations how does the objective model subjective of morality that is that's what pragmatic means it's subjective so you have a subjective limitation it wasn't pragmatic i'm just stipulating that there's only two possible that's, courses that's of action pragmatic stop. that's subjective that those are synonyms synonyms right there so if you say here are your subjective it's not pragmatic limitations, or subjective it literally is how, how can you be so dumb? talking about like, the objective if, you, if you're taking a subjective limitation this person it's cannot not. do both things the perfectly moral thing he can only do one of this limited thing he's not god that's a subjective limitation congratulations it's not objectively moral anymore because you're talking about the subjective limitations of that one person in the situation was the holy shit that's subjective it's a, that's hang on it's a, it's a limitation of the subjective of the yes, subject it's subjective right? right that doesn't make it subjective but that's just a confusion of terms but but the point is that it's a subjective limitation that. is that the objectively moral thing to do no it's the subjectively moral thing to do based off their pragmatic limitations yes it is a subjective no. limitation of this individual hang on when i say when we're asking this question of whether an individual did something moral by restraining the person in this scenario where the only things that could have done are restrain them to stop the shooting or done nothing right um so from their that subjective context based on their subjective limitations yeah it's well it's objective
limitation of a subject, right? That's not right. right. Subjective. Their subjective limitations. Yeah. There, as in objectively, this, this individual, this objectively mm -hmm. existing individual, has a subjective limitations of their physical body that only things they can do. Their subjective limitations. Right. I don't give a shit about their subjective limitations. Mine is an objective model of morality. So it's things that are true independent of any subjective Im limitations. I don't care about the subjective limitations. Yeah. Okay, we got about 20 minutes left of open discussion and then the Q&A, and I put a poll in the live chat. Who is winning? Vote on the poll, yeah. Detroit or T-Jump. So you, you, People in chat, please go to the poll in the live chat of Godless Girls YouTube and vote stuff. <laughs> so... So you're gonna say that um, everyone. All so the we can know, we know uh, that the, we can't rely on the poll results if T Jump's audience is gonna come over here. I don't know how he has all those fans. <laughs> That's weird. But go you, ahead. You told Sorry, me to bribe tell. them to come here. Now you're complaining about it. Strange. Yeah. Um, so you think people are gonna agree, and you think people do agree? All these philosophies you talk with. That if someone only has these two options available to them, right? It's that's that's, that's, that that's, that's, that's again that's irrelevant to my model. It's a straw man. My my model doesn't. If someone only has these two options, I don't care. My model is We're what is the logically case. best possible case. That's it. There's no yeah, this no. person has these objective two possibilities. Look, that's not a part of my model. That's not in the model. I know it's not in the model, but we're talking about a particular case, right? We're talking about the moral assessment or immoral assessment of a particular example. Someone performs a particular action, and you and on your model, because there's a logical possibility where maybe someone else with more capacity um, stops the shooting, but without imposing on the shooter's will. Yeah. Um, that the person who does have that restriction, um, that they uh, whatever they do, then when they restrict the shooter, that that counts as immoral. Right, because right, it's not that's objectively what you're saying, right? moral, it's subjectively moral. It's subjectively moral for that person in that case to do the best that they can. That would be the moral in the utilitarian sense. But objectively, in the context of all possible beings, is that the moral thing to do? No. It is subjectively moral, justified immoral action, subjectively moral for that individual, yeah. given their limitations, to do the best that they can. Objectively, in an objective model yeah. of morality, we don't care about the subjective limitations of the individual. We want to know what is objectively moral for all possible beings in all possible worlds. What is the moral thing to do? And so it doesn't matter what their subjective moral limitations are because that's subjective morality. In which case, I would agree. Yes, it is subjectively moral for this individual to tie down now, the murderer. It is not objectively moral for them to do it. No, no, they are not. It's, it's objectively moral for them to do something that imposes no imposition of will. That would be objectively moral. I'm a little confused now because now you have two different senses of morality, right? The subjective morality and the subjective morality. Um, sure. But the subjective we're just talking about your model, the objective, the objective yes. model, right? So objectively, and, is it moral to yeah. tie down a person? No. Objectively, the moral thing to do would be to yeah, yeah. do an action that has no involuntary. That's the objectively moral right. correctly, I think. Right. But I'm talking about a particular case, right? Someone the actually goes morality. out there and restrains. Yes, of subjective morality. But remember, we're talking about my model, which is about objective morality. So you're like, oh, I want to bring up this subjective morality the, case. I'm like, but my model is an objective model of morality. It's not about the subjective models. No, no, no. But the objective, if there are objective moral facts, they're about token events or actions, right? This rock falling on a person against their will is objectively immoral, right? Sure, yes. In the objective context right? of all possible beings, it is immoral, yes. Yeah, but that actual occurrence, that's something, that was something that was in involuntary position of will. Yes. So it was immoral. Objectively, objectively immoral. It is objectively so, immoral, yes. Right. It's not so subjectively immoral. The rock is the subject, so it's not subjectively immoral. The rock didn't do anything. Yeah, that's, this is going to be a confusion on subjective morality, but I don't want to get into that. I just want to talk about your model here. Um, in that case, right, someone actually restrained the shooter, that on your model, Subjectively moral, subjectively moral, objectively immoral. It's objectively immoral, right? Yes. And objectively, it's about... moral. Objectively, it's immoral. And pretty much got everyone agreement. Everyone, everyone agrees with that. Utilitarians agree with that. Alex Malpass agrees with that. Hey, there's a better solution. There's an objectively better solution. That's what we mean by objective morality. So, yes. That, there, yeah, it's not, it's not objectively moral. If that's, yeah. So no one's, utilitarianism doesn't agree with the objective moral uh, claim there. It agrees with maybe with the subjective moral claim, whatever that's supposed to be. I think what? you're a bit confused on what that means. Well, no, no, it agrees with both. So like, again, I, no. I tried this argument on Alan Maxfield. I took that said and said, there's a disagreement between me and utilitarianism because of exactly the same mm -hmm. things you're saying. He's like, no, yeah. he was wrong. That's not, doesn't do that. He's like, yo, we can fully grant in utilitarianism that there's an objective morality or an objectively best possible outcome on some moral utilitarian or utility basis that isn't being achieved by these two outcomes. But subjectively on these limitations, this one is the best that this individual can do. 
all three of the outcomes, do nothing, let the people die, do the minimum you can do and save the person's life, and the logically possible best solution are all granted on both models and are not, there's no difference. No, you just have different they're, they're labels for it. Look, you can, if you want to say that, that there's a different label because what the utilitarian counts as moral is what you're counting as subjectively moral yeah. or justified immorality. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yes. Yeah. So I suppose you could have this notion of justified immorality that lines up with utilitarianism. I'm just saying that your account of objective morality involuntary imposition of will on its own does not line up with it because it's counting as immoral things, which utilitarianism does not. Yes, yeah, so you're saying my of description of objective morality doesn't align with the usage of all possible morality in utilitarianism. I, I don't care. But it's not lining up with, I mean, of course, there's different varieties of utilitarianism, but broadly speaking, utilitarianism is going to disagree in many cases with your objective moral theory. Maybe it's going to agree with your... You can take it up with Alice Malpass. I, I discussed this with Alice Malpass. I said the same thing you did. He said, no, go take it up with him. I don't care. We're having discussion with each other, not with Malpass. If he says the same Great. thing as it disagrees with me, I'll disagree with him. I don't go go for it. Go disagree with him. I don't care. I don't care. I don't like utilitarianism. I think it's stupid. I think that it doesn't work for the reasons you're describing. It's, it's a bad model. If you think that killing a thousand yeah. people to save a million is moral, I think you're a dumbass. Well, um, you think killing one person to save a trillion people is moral? If you think it's no, if you think that's moral, you're a dumbass. You're killing a person. It's wrong. It's immoral. You've killed a person. That's still bad. Still, you've done a bad thing, not a good thing. Look, I'll agree that it's you've done something that um, other um, factors of the scenario aside, you'd rather not do, right? You, maybe you're familiar with this notion of um, um, pro tanto and pro toto reason or uh, pro toto and pro, pro tanto and pro toto goods, right? It's like we have some reason or maybe to not kill a person, right? It's um, on its own, it's sort of we have reason not to do it. But in this scenario, what we have reason to do, what we have pro toto reason to do is kill the one person, right? Because we have these two options, uh, kill them yes, or you're, not. You're justified in doing a bad thing, which would be a justified immoral action. Seems to fit pretty well. Your, on your theory, it counts as a justified immoral action. Yeah, but on just sure. about any other theory, um, including what people are just going to say has, has morality is I, I already went, we've already that's going to count this. as we've moral. Over this. Yeah. All right. So... I, I don't know, maybe we can move on to um, a more kind of basic question. I think when we're, we're trying to come up with a theory of morality, what are the moral facts? What are the, you know, what's one way to categorize the moral from the immoral, right? And you're saying, well, this is, this is how it works. You know, the objectively speaking, it's involuntary, along these lines of involuntary position of will. That's the conclusion. Yeah, yeah, that's your conclusion. But the way I would want to approach this question is start by looking at the claims that people are making, right? What, what are the moral claims, right? When we say that something is immoral, um, what are we saying about the world? <laughs> well, I don't care about that at all. What is it about that with, actually... uh, like moral intuition? So the claims are meant to describe the intuitions. The intuitions are what we start with, and claims are just an attempt to describe the intuitions. So the intuitions are the actual moral facts. No, no, no. But that's, that's already skipping ahead, because if what? you say that you have a quote-unquote moral intuition, well... What does it mean to have a moral intuition rather than an intuition about something else? It has what? to do with something about how we're using the term moral. No, it has to do with Especially the feeling. Your intuition has, is about that. The, the words are irrelevant. We had moral feelings way before words existed. So we have a feeling, we see something happen, we feel bad or something, and we labeled that immoral. So morality yeah. is a uh, reference to a particular feeling that we have, and the feeling is the moral fact. The usage, the word usage is just irrelevant. It's, it's post hoc after these feelings. Well, you just, in your, what you just said there is a case where the, we developed the term, the, word usage right right on to your describe what you the just feelings. said which doesn't yeah what you said doesn't really make any sense for the rest of your what? view um what? but what you just said is that we come to use these moral terms to talk about feelings that we have yeah um so what we feel bad we call that immoral is that what you're saying that's literally how it happened so yes we are, you're you're an atheist I, I imagine we believe in evolution so yeah. yeah we evolved we got these feelings these feelings we have these bad feelings and we labeled them with a word called morality so we have particular bad feelings just like we labeled anger with the word yeah. anger we labeled immoral feelings with the word immoral yeah so of course i'm going to say that i think feelings are relevant to the development of moral concepts and the sure. terms used to talk about them um but that's one i think is much more complicated than that and two, I think, well, the, the term use and the concepts have developed in a lot more 
uh, interesting ways than, than something like that. But let's just suppose that you're right and that when we use these terms or we have these moral concepts, we're talking about feelings in some way like you're talking about. Sure. There's, there's bad feelings, you know, feelings we don't like and so on. Yeah. Well, wouldn't the conclusion just be that oh, what a bad feeling is is one of the ones we've labeled bad and that we don't like and what a good feeling is are those that we do like and that we've labeled good. Yeah, it could be. Uh, we just follow kind of from the semantics. No, the, 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 the semantics don't entail an ontology one way or the other. Just like if I see an ocean, it doesn't entail that that ocean is either there or it is an optical illusion. Either one could be the case. The fact that the feeling exists doesn't tell us one way or the other if that feeling corresponds to some fact in reality. No, it doesn't have to. The point is that you've, the way you were talking about how we um, have developed these moral notions and terms right. is that we've just filled out the extension of yeah. what good is, right? By pointing to certain feelings and so on that we have. Yes, just like when we so, see things, we point those out and give them labels like, oh, look, a tree. Like maybe trees are just optical illusions and there are no trees. Maybe trees exist. Feelings and sensations are the essentially the same here. Like they could be there. They could be correspondent to some real thing or they could be a hallucination. Whether or not they are is irrelevant mm -hmm. to the fact that we see them and label them. Yeah, well, we have feelings. I presume yeah. that's not in con in uh, being contested here. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we feel pain. We feel, you know, bad in some ways or others. Um, and we use some, sometimes we use this normative language to talk about those feelings. I agree. Um, and, but if, if you're right, that that's how, what we're talking about when we're talking about, when we use this language and we employ our moral concepts, then what good and bad is, is just going to be collections of feelings, right? Uh, so that's no, what we're talking no, about. No, you're still misunderstanding the point here. So if I see something and I give it a label, like a tree, yeah. does that tell me whether or not the tree objectively exists or is a figment of my imagination? It doesn't. Right. The feeling, so, wait, is wait, 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 wait. the feeling is the same. Having a feeling may or may not correspond to some objective fact. Like you could be a Platonist about beauty or something. You see beauty and okay. ah, maybe beauty's actually out there somewhere. The feelings aren't inherently psychological. There could be an objective thing out there for a feeling of beauty or morality, just like there could be an objective tree out there. The seeing it or having a sensation about it doesn't tell us one way or the other. It seems like you're begging the question saying, well, because it's a feeling, it must be psychological. And then suddenly, hang on. When you're talking about feelings here, uh, are you just talking about experiences or are you yes. talking about the things that we're like perceiving in some way? Uh, both. So like if I have an experience of beauty, there's two possibilities. One is that beauty is purely a psychological phenomenon in our brain. Two is that there's some platonic yeah. object of beauty out there that's objective that my mind is corresponding to, or maybe like there's a God or something that instantiates beauty that yeah. I'm, I'm tuned with. So there's the psychological subjective possibility and there's the objective possibilities and me, my experience of beauty doesn't yeah. tell me one way or the yeah. other which one it is. And so in the case of morality, what is, I mean, it sounded it sound at first like you were saying, we identified certain... Um, good experiences and bad experiences, you know, pain and whatever, yeah. maybe pleasure. And we'd use more language to talk about those. Yeah. But if we're just, we're just talking about the experiences, right? That doesn't have to be something further that we're seeing or perceiving. Right. I agree. It are... doesn't, that's not, it's not because we have the experience, therefore it's objective. That's never a part of my argument. I'm saying we have the experience and it tells yeah. us nothing, whether or not it's objective. It's, it's just there. Maybe subjective, maybe objective. The fact that yeah. we came about the language by having experiences and labeling those experiences with moral language doesn't tell us one way or the other whether or not it's objective. That's just what we're using the words to mean. The moral facts of what, what they are, if they are anything, is the experiences that we then labeled with the words. So whatever's causing those yeah. experiences, whether they're subject or objective, that's what morality is. The way we no. label those with the words is just happenstance. No, but that's just a confusion, right? Like, if we're if we're using these words to label particular experiences and feelings, yeah, then it's not morality is not what causes them. Uh, it the could be again. You're begging the question. Feelings. You're begging the question. It could be. It could be the case that there is an objective morality, a platonic morality, or a law of nature morality that causes these feelings to happen in the brain. That's a possibility. You're just begging the question that out. Maybe it is. Like if I see a tree, it could be caused by actual no. photons hitting an actual tree. No, no that's. No, you're confused because no, what you're you confused. did like, was this provide. Is, this is very basic. What you did was provide. It is pretty basic. What you did is provide at least a rough account of moral semantics, right? What you did was say, we're using this moral terms and our moral concepts to pick out 
certain feelings, right? Yes. Sensations. Um, so we have a sensation. Yeah. And we describe that with a word. And the sensation Worldly may or may not be caused good, by an objective feature in reality. That doesn't matter, right? Because if the, if we're if we're, we're talking about are those feelings, that's what the good and the bad is. The things that are good or bad are the feelings and uh, you know experiences. Then it doesn't matter what causes them. The moral facts are fixed by the feelings, right? No, we have a good we have a no. good experience. That's good. When I say right? I see a theory. tree. I'm not talking about the photons that are hitting my eye. I say there's actually a tree there. So this experience right. I'm having is corresponding so to you. something independent of my experience. Of no, it. No, experience no, no. I is caused. Wait, wait, wait. So morality is the same way. So if I have a feeling of morality, what most people mean by morality isn't the psychological neurons firing in their brain causing feelings. They think it's actually something there. There is actually an objective thing causing this feeling to which it corresponds to like a god or a platonic object, who knows? But they think there's an objective thing there. So when most people use this word of morality, they're not talking about their psychological emotional states, even though that's de facto how the words right. came about to be used. They mean an objective thing which they think is causing these, just like the tree is objectively causing the photons in your to hit your eye in a particular way. So they do refer to this as an objective thing independent of their psychological experience, even though their psychological experience is how these words came about to be used in such a way. Now, oh, so I already asked you whether um, when you were talking about feelings, um, uh, are you, when you say feelings of of something else and that other thing is supposed to be the moral thing, like when you say a, a perception of a tree, the tree is not the perception or the right. experience. It's the yes. thing in the world if there isn't. A yes, that was just... the second second one of your options in the opening. No, 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 no. That's that's what that's completely. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Um, it sounded because when you introduced this at the beginning um, a couple minutes ago, you said, "Oh, we have these feelings," you know, and we start to label those good and bad, right? Yeah, and, and use that moral normative language to talk about them. Yep. And I asked you. Okay, is it? Are we just talking about the things that are good or bad? Are the experiences, or is it the things that like their experiences of, like they were perceiving something? And you said it was the the feelings, the experiences, to which the words that's, correspond. The words correspond to the feelings. But right. yes, I think the feelings are caused by something external that's actually there. But that doesn't matter, right? Because what? if the things that are good or bad, the, so morality, the if it exists objectively, words. is the things causing the feelings. If it's subjective, then it's just no, the feelings. That's just a semantic confusion, what? right? Because on, on your, the approach that you're describing, the things that are good or bad are just the feelings, right? No, it doesn't matter if something else morality. causes them. That would not be objective. So morality, if it's objective, is an independent well, thing which causes these feelings. I agree, but the account of moral semantics you gave what? is just entails this, right? No. Again, you're confusing epistemology and ontology. Our epistemology of how we described morality was through what we had feelings, and then we used words to describe those feelings. That's how we know about morality. Does that tell yeah. us one way or the other if morality is objective or subjective? No, it tells us nothing about moral ontology. Our ep yes, epistemic means by which we learn about morality tells us nothing about the ontology of morality. Just like our Look, epistemic means I... to learn about a tree tells us nothing about the ontology of a tree. It could be in the matrix. We have no idea. No, no, no. If 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 you tell me, I think you have that. The way we use moral, have used moral terms, right, and have these moral concepts. You know, we're picking out certain feelings. That's when I we say good. I don't know why feelings. you're you're just so deluded on this. What's the difference between epistemology and ontology? Epistemology has has to do with how we come to know or believe things. Right. Ontology has to do with what there is. So sense experience. That's like epistemology, right? It's how we know things. Well, it might be related to uh, epistemology, but yeah, right, sense experience right. is something but it, that But it may or may not have anything to do with ontology. So the fact that we see a tree tells us nothing. Whether the tree is there, who knows? Maybe it's just figments of matrix, right? Or epistemology right. of the, the sensation of the tree doesn't tell us whether or not the tree is there. You agree to that part, right? Yeah, but that's an inappropriate analogy. Wait, 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 wait. Analogy so, so the, the tree another is the sense sensation experience. would be feelings. Feelings and emotions are just yeah. like sight taste touch they're just a sensation we have mm -hmm. and whether or not that sensation corresponds to something independent of our sense experience is unknown that's the ontology we have the epistemology yeah. we don't know if that tells us anything about ontology with me so well can't tell us something about ontology what? in this case look you've given an account of moral semantics according to which if there are moral facts or moral things they're experiences they're feelings and those are subjective no no right? the feelings are the caused by the moral things the moral things would be like the law of physics that causes morality or god's nature or the platonic object that's the moral thing and we but that's inconsistent with the moral feelings. semantics you provided what 
That's inconsistent with the moral semantics. No, it's not. It's literally every one of my videos. Every one of my videos says this. I'm just talking about what you said right now. Let me give maybe analogy. you understood it. Maybe I misunderstood you. If you don't know my background model, which you should, because there's tons of videos about it, I think there is an objective moral thing out there which causes our yeah. feelings. The feelings aren't the morality. Nobody thinks that. That I wouldn't call it objective morality. It would be literally stupid. So nobody thinks that. I agree, but you're inconsistent with the semantics you no, provided. Right? No, I yes. was talking about epistemology and how we came to know about it through feelings. If there is a moral object that causes no. feelings and we have feelings and describe it those with words, that would be our epistemic means to learn about morality. Would it tell us if it's well, objective you, or subjective? You talked about no. what are the things that we came to label as good yes. and bad, moral yes. and moral. we label the feelings. feelings. We label the feelings. Is that what the morality yeah. is? No. We label them, yes. Is that what it is? No. Of course it is. If there's if there are such no, feelings, that's stupid. those are the things we've called no, moral. No one, no objective moral realist thinks the feelings are morality. That's stupid. We label them. I agree, label. but that you've inconsistent, you're inconsistent. No, it's with not. View, you're a that's dumbass. That's what you're follows dumbass. from the you If I label a tree green, or if I label the sky no, blue, analogous. does that mean that the sky itself is blue? No, it's the sensation. I have a sensation of blue. I don't actually know what color the sky that's actually is. That's disanalogous because in this case, we're labeling oh the experiences this is such an themselves. Easy analogy. Every philosopher I've talked to understood that said you can't, you're dumbass. Sorry. It's disanalogous. In this case, we're labeling experiences themselves. In that case, we're labeling a thing that you've seen or perceived. Yes, and I think those feelings are a thing you've perceived. You've perceived the morality in the thing. If you feel bad, you've perceived the immorality of the object. This is not a hard analogy to understand. Everybody understands this. Yeah, if you feel bad, that's one of the things that we're calling bad, right? No, if you feel bad, you are experiencing the morality in the thing. The feeling is a consequence of the morality. It isn't the morality. No one thinks the feeling is the morality. The feeling is what That's we're why, okay. labeling. But now we're coming morality. back to something I already asked you, which you what? just rejected. Whether well, then, what you should know more about my model because it's perceived. obvious this is the case. This okay, guys, hard. it's time for the Q and A. I've asked so many questions to clarify your model, and then this is what you sent it to. So anyway, then you should have asked them more clearly, or watched one of my previous videos where I explained this like a billion times. Yeah, I don't think I need to do homework for you to explain your model clearly. But. Right, and I, I explained it clearly. Everybody in the chat got it. I don't know why you didn't. It's pretty. It's a pretty easy analogy to understand. If you see something, does that mean the thing you're seeing is the tree? Is the, is the photons the tree? No, no one thinks that. Like the analogy is pretty clear. No, it's this okay. Analogy. Question for because first question anyway. for T Jump. T Jump, is it your view that we are able to see moral facts? Is in part of the brain will light up? You said something like that on stream. That question from Vegan World Order. I don't understand the question. Uh, do we see moral facts? Sort of. I think that if we, if there are objective moral facts and we see them and they cause the sensations in the brain, they'll cause the part of the brain to light up. Okay. Uh, next question from Atheist Discussions, which is Clubhouse Debates. He just rebranded his channel. Uh, on oh, your gosh, moral gosh. theory, is it moral to take $50 and stream it on your channel too, T-Jump? Sure. I mean, she didn't ask me not to stream it. I think that was just like a joke. It's supposed to be a joke. Okay, I'm scrolling for more questions. Well, what the fuck? Nobody else is asking a question? <laughs> okay, I guess we'll wrap it up then. If you guys want to say any last words. Oh, also, T-Jump, you said you... To Big Bad Mama, that you would uh, dress, wear a costume if Absolutely. you were paid. So, would, so would you dress up in drag? Sure. Okay. <laughs> How much would that cost? Uh, good question. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it costs more than the price of the clothes because I have to go buy the clothes and I have to spend the time to do it. It's probably a few hundred. Oh bucks. well, they'd probably want to pick out the clothes for you. That's, if they pay for them, I don't care. As long as it doesn't get me um, demonetized, I don't. So, care. how much for drag? So you have to pay for the clothes and then pay for my time to go get the clothes. So like two, 200 bucks, 250 bucks. Uh, it doesn't matter what the costume is. It's the same price for every costume. Well, I mean, unless cost, you're going to buy something really expensive. If it's from Target. No, I mean, are you going to charge more? Like if you wear a pirate with an eye patch versus a woman dressing up as a woman? No, I don't care. Um, mm, Why is this part of this? I mean, I probably <laughs> wouldn't care. Like it, it would just, the only change in the price would probably be the cost of the costume. Like if you want me to buy a Louis Vuitton bag, you're going to have to pay for the bag. But the, I don't, I wouldn't care if I dressed up as a pirate or a woman. It doesn't make a difference to me either. It's fine. Okay. Uh, Detroit, did you want to make a closing statement? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like we didn't get into a lot of the stuff that I actually wanted to get into. Um, but the few things that we covered, 
I thought were kind of interesting. Um, at the beginning, oh, um, do you want to answer this question? Sure. Uh, for Detroit, how did you maintain your composure so well during this discussion? <laughs> At any point, you felt you had to find the inner strength to preserve your will to live. <laughs> no, I just have a conversation. It's fine. Um, yeah, so I'm trying, I'm trying, trying to go over there. Man. Um, so... Yeah, at the beginning, um, one of the main points I, I made was that it, I think there's very good reason to think that T-Jump's model uh, disagrees sharply in many cases with normal moral intuitions. Um, and on its own, that's going to be some evidence against the theory. But I think there's, it's stronger evidence against the theory because it's going to disagree with cases that I think are um, sort of paradigm cases. Um, I mean, this can get a little bit technical. I don't want to offer necessarily a, a paradigm um, uh, analysis of more concepts, but I think there are certain paradigm cases that people take to just almost be definitive of moral and immoral action. And um, that example where, you know, someone has those only only those two options and they can restrain the um, the mass murderer or not restrain them um, and let, just let, let them go. Um, just about anyone is going to take the restraining to be moral and not only moral, but like almost a paradigm example of moral action. Um, and then uh, we then further discussed, um, uh, well, the role of moral intuitions, um, what was it in between this, the stuff at the uh, beginning and the end? Um, uh, uh, well, at the end, we discussed the, the moral, uh, cause C. Jim said something about how he thought that, um, moral language and moral concepts came about, um, ultimately talking about, I mean, Look at the tape, but it sounded to me like he was saying, and I tried to clarify this, and it sounded like he agreed that we are talking about particular experiences when we use moral language, and um, right, there's good and bad experiences, and well, if that's right, if that's the way the moral semantics works, then the things that are good or bad are the experiences, and there may be further facts about which things cause those, which sort of um, patterns of the good and bad experiences there are, but the things that are good or bad are experiences. Um, that just follows from the semantics. If if there are experiences, um, and uh, what was what was the thing in the middle? I, uh, I didn't I didn't write it down. Um, uh, if I wasn't mistaken, uh, eh, it's not coming to mind. Um, do you recall what was the thing we talked about after the the beginning part, um, but before the last part? I I don't know what that means I, um, we talked about well, we uh, the justifying moral action versus moral action in utilitarianism uh, yeah well i sort of said that about how um, well, I don't, was that the something after that the beginning part yeah that's the beginning part and then we talked about something between that and and the stuff but um the moral semantics here at the end uh, i totally forget what it was um but whatever um i mean i didn't i haven't gotten into in this discussion how I think moral semantics works, what I think moral facts are. Um, I have a very semantics heavy approach. I want to get clear on what the claims are that we're making, right? What If we're talking about what most people are talking about, okay, what are the semantics of everyday or folk, folk moral discourse? That's a complicated and uh, really messy uh, question to, to try to answer. I have some views about that and it's, well, Needless to say, I don't, I don't think people are getting at anything even remotely like what uh, what T-Jump is talking about. Maybe that's some future, uh, uh, on, on some future semantics, that's what people will be getting at, but uh, I don't think it is today. So anyway, I guess I'll leave it there. Uh, thanks for uh, T-Jump for participating and calls for putting this on everyone else for watching. Uh, the, so the last question is, sorry guys, there was some delay, so I couldn't, the questions weren't like coming up on the stream yard thing, but, uh, so the last question for T-Jump is asking. No, Brenda, if... Brenda asked, uh, do I believe in census divinitatis? Essentially that's close to what it is, but I wouldn't call it like census divinitatis is a direct sense of the divine kind of a thing. Or as I say, it's no different than sense experience, which is why I think 
Victoria's argument is dumb. Like the language behind trees evolved by we had an experience of trees, then we use the language to describe the tree. We're not using it to describe the sensation of the tree. Like obviously we're having a sensation of the tree, and we're not trying to use the words to simply describe the sensation of the tree. We're saying that it refers to something outside of the sensation. The sensation itself was our medium by which we could know about the potential objective thing. Our feelings about morality are, in my analogy, exactly analogous. The feelings are the sensation of the thing that exists there. The feelings themselves are not the moral thing. Most people would agree with that. And so the language we use was describing those feelings de facto, just like our words about trees are de facto describing the experience of a tree, but they do not refer to the experience of the tree. They refer to the objective thing that exists. Same with morality. If there is objective morality, we use the words to describe the feelings de facto, but they are meant to refer to the thing. What that had to do with sensitive and I'm not sure, but I mean, I don't want to get yeah, back into this, but they were like closing those. Okay, well, you just oh, answered okay. this last question from Converse Contender. For, Wait, what was the uh, previous one that you changed from? There's one more. Right oh, I don't. There. Oh, it was, I think it was a were you aware you got destroyed? Your mom. <laughs> uh, quite, could your in so T jump, could your intuition approach be used to prove theism? That's a question from Converse Contender. Well, the intuition approach doesn't, like, as I mentioned to Detroit, it doesn't tell us whether or not it exists. It's just saying, I have a sense experience. So if you have a sense experience of God, yes, that's a sense experience. And then you would, to confirm it, you need to make novel testable predictions or something to show that it actually is a real thing rather than imaginary, um, which is my model it does attempt to do that, but it's not entailed directly in the experience itself. The experience is just how we came to develop the usage of the terms of morality as we have a feeling um, and whether or not that feeling is caused by an objective thing doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. And then we made words to describe that feeling in an attempt to address that there was something else there independent of our experience. Whether or not there is is irrelevant, again, because the point is the words were developed by the feelings. The feelings are not the, 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 the morality. They're what caused us to label the morality. Okay. Thank you, T Jump, for coming on. I'm sure we'll want to do this again with your the costume thing. You're you sure. can go. You your hour is up. Thank you. Uh we're gonna have an after show on Clubhouse. T Jump's invited, but I doubt he'll come. I need to go to bed. I wake up at like six AM. Peace out. Good night. Uh T Thank uh you. Detroit, do you wanna ask this answer this question and then we'll end it? Uh 